Hi there. Um, last week, an explosion rocked the core of the world. I wrote about it then, but I've only really had a moment to reflect on it now. Um, I guess the scene could have been from a movie, a war movie, if you were watching it, like we did on CNN and other news channels. I guess it's a horror movie if you're one of the extras on the set and the people involved. In a matter of seconds, a struggling city's residents, uh, 300,000 people are, are uh, reduced to homelessness in just a single blast. Um, it's a lethal combination of ammonium nitrate fireworks and a fire and Beirut lies obliterated again. I remember the scenes as a child in the 70s of a civil war happening and I wondered to myself how things could really ever get any worse. Uh, civil war, child soldiers, infiltrations, um, occupations, and nearly a, half a decade, half a century later, um, one wonders if anything's changed. So, while the sound of glass is being swept up all around her, a 79-year-old grandmother is sitting at one of the few surviving pieces of furniture from this explosion. Her granddaughter says that it is a 60-year-old piano, and like her grandmother, it too has survived many things, including the Civil War. She's wearing a mask as she plays, and the first two chords of the tune are instantly recognizable. It's the tune of Old Lang Syne, penned in 1788 by Robert Burns as a as a Scottish folk song. And, and what a tune to play in this time of turmoil and how has she found this still point in a turbulent world? The song of reunion, of relationship, of kinship uh, airs through the destruction of Beirut. And I wonder if, if this isn't just a sign of hope and resilience. Again, in this month of August, as Women's Month, that are around as seedlings of hope and resilience. Just like the band played on while the Titanic sank to show that resilience and to give that hope, so too is there a tree, a calorie pear tree, at the site of Ground Zero in, uh, in New York City. And it is the surviving tree of 9-11. Every year, seedlings of that tree are given to three communities who have experienced some upheaval in the last while. And one wonders how you choose only three communities during this time. I guess that this grandmother has found this still point in a turning world. And one wonders if Robert Burns had any idea about how much we now need that cup of kindness that he wrote about in a bygone era. And so this week, I hope you find the still point in a turning world. And perhaps it's up to us to give that cup of kindness where we can. Until next time, see you then.